Hey everybody, Much Adventure here, and today I'm going to teach you how to get into orbit the simplest way possible, and I promise there will be no math. Here we go. Here we go. Everybody, Much Adventure here today. I'm Welcome in everybody. I got trusty MS Paint open. This is what happened when I started playing Kerbal and I couldn't get into orbit. I, I needed to watch a ton of tutorials. Um, a lot of those tutorials I have found personally are like way too mathy, way too sciencey, way too like, you know, you're watching a 40 minute tutorial of like number. It's just insane. Right. And it really is. It, it comes down to a couple basic things. And I promise you don't really need math to enjoy Kerbal Space Program. OK, so th let me go over what I was doing originally when I was playing this game. OK, so here let's draw Kerbin, right? Here's Kerbin. So there's Kerbin. And now let's draw our, uh, our rocket trajectory. OK, so when you first start in the game and, and I know you have to realize, obviously, this is a 2D drawing and, and in reality, it's 3D. So hang on, hang, hang on with me. Right. So you need to know a couple basic things here, right? What I was doing when I was first starting Kerbal is you'd launch straight up in the air. Oh, let's get this a little bit bigger here. This is what I would do is I would launch straight up in the air, right? You're going, you're going. It's like, I'm going to space. I want to orbit. And then all of a sudden, right, you run out of fuel, uh, but you didn't really make it. And now you're just kind of crashing back down, right? That's that's kind of what the first, my first couple orbits look like. And, and it gets, it, you know, it gets kind of frustrating. Or, right, you try, you know, you're turning really early, really early, really early, you know, and you kind of run out of fuel, right? So what do we do about this? Well, there's a couple principles that I think will really help you guys understand the basics of kind of what we're trying to do when you're trying to orbit a planet and, and get, off, get off of the ground when you're doing it. And actually, Elon Musk explained this in an interview once when he was trying to explain uh, orbital mechanics to people. And it really is the easiest way to understand it. And let me show you right here. Um, we have ourselves, you know, when you go to the mall and you get those coin things, right? You go to the mall, you get those those coin um, things. This is just a random YouTube video, by the way. What are they called? Like a coin funnel, right? Coin donation funnel, right? You put the coin in at the top. You know, it spins and it spins and it spins and it spins and it spins. And it gets faster and faster and faster as it goes down into the, uh, into the bottom there, right? This is honestly the best way to think about orbital mechanics, okay? So think about the bottom of this funnel here, right? As the watch, the guy's going to light up his uh, coin. But think about the bottom of that funnel right is kind of like being on earth right and the top of the funnel up here is kind of like being in orbit around earth right so as you see it gets you know it gets steeper and steeper and steeper and it gets harder you know faster the coin starts going faster and faster and faster as the gravity pulls it in and the coin loses friction right the coin loses friction as it's kind of spinning around here right so let's just check that out so what these guys, you know, if, if we were to put this into Kerbal uh, Space Program terms, what these guys are doing is essentially coming in from orbit and landing on uh, on Kerbin, right? That's what's happening. See, as it speeds up, it starts going faster and faster, which is why we need heat shields, obviously, right? He, this guy's coming in and it is going down, right? He's got a, a wonky orbit, which can happen, you know, even in Kerbal. And obviously, right, as it gets closer to the bottom, it speeds up. So think about this. As it's doing that, right? I mean, think about this. If this is, in fact, what we're going to consider a uh, Kerbin, right? How much energy do you actually need to start a coin here? You know? And spin it all the way back up here, right? That's what we're trying to do. When you're trying to launch a rocket and get an orbit, you're essentially all the way in that hole. And you're trying to spin, you know, a coin all the way up. Right, so what happens if we were to be here and what happens if you just threw a coin up, right? What would it do? You'd throw it up and it would literally come right back down, right? You know, so if we go back to the uh, MS Paint drawing, uh, where is that here? Uh, can we redo that? Redo, redo. Oh, 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 right, we go back to the MS Paint drawing, right? It's starting to look a lot like that. But now think about it, you need a lot more force. You know how easy they just roll it down here and it spins for a long time, right? You need a lot more force as well to bring it up, to spin it, which is why you need so much, uh, you know, you need, literally need a rocket to do such a crazy thing. So with that in mind, right? How is it, how would you get to spin a coin here constantly? Well, the answer 
is you would apply force to it constantly, right? And the difference is in space, this is always has friction. As the coin's rolling, it's always gonna have friction. But the difference is in space, there's a certain point when you're off of, uh, you know, Earth or Kerbin, when there's no more friction because now you're in space, right? There's no more oxygen, there's no more uh, aerodynamics or whatever slowing you down. So consider this when you're thinking about how to launch in orbit, right? So now if we go back to our thing, what, what do you really want to do? Right? You want to come up like this, right? And kind of, you know, boom, you kind of want to do that, right? There you go. I mean, that's not the best circle, but essentially that's what we want to do. And the way to do that, because if you consider that we have to first get out of the atmosphere, number one, have to. Um, and then we have to be going really fast because if we start slowing down, just like that coin, right? Imagine that coin. Imagine we could keep applying pressure to that coin. It would spin forever. Imagine there was no friction on that coin. It would spin forever at the top. It would never come down if, if you could apply a little bit of force to it, right? So you need to be going really fast and outside the atmosphere to achieve orbit because if you're not going fast, the, 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 uh, the gravity will eventually pull you back down, right? And if you are going fast, I mean, you'll just be in a permanent orbit. So with that in mind, let's go back into the game. Now, what I did, I've already built a vehicle. And what I did, guys, I want to show you right here in the research and development. I literally did one quick mission. I'll show it right now. Um, when you first, this is science mode, by the way. So when you first start science mode, you just get these basic parts, right? You get this, the, the goo, mystery goo, and you get the capsule, and you get a, a solid rocket booster and a parachute. I mean, you literally just throw those on. You do uh, an EVA, you do a surface sample right on the launch pad, you do the mystery goo right on the launch pad, then you launch, and then when you're in the air, you can do another uh, couple um, tests, and then when you get back down, you just recover your vessel. You do that, and I'm telling you, right, you'll have enough for what we have here. So if you check it out, this is what you start with, right? You start with all these things. I, um, I threw a fit on there too, as you can see. And then what I researched was this, basic rocketry, engineering 101, and survivability, that's it. The reason I did survivability is um, for the heat shields. That's the only reason. So when we re-enter after uh, orbit, we're doing the heat shields. So I wanted to make a rocket like with the most ghetto parts possible, and that is why I did it this way. So you can see all we really have is these fuel tanks, this swivel engine, uh, these hammer solid fuel boosters, and then of course we have the, like, the original solid fuel booster that gives us the flea. So with that in mind, um, that's it now if we go back to our coin analogy right another thing the, uh, the one other quick principle i want to tell you and which is very obvious is that um when you're building a rocket obviously the more heavy it is you know the harder it is to push it up in the sky right it's it's that simple right so there comes a point when you're adding stuff to a rocket that it, does, it starts making less sense right so like you can't just keep adding fuel to think that you're going to go farther because eventually you're going to have so much fuel that it's so heavy that your rocket doesn't really um, work well, I guess. And so what you got to do really is, you know, you detach as, you know, you probably know stages. Um, what you do is you stage your rocket, right? So you fire these guys off, then you detach them. Then you fire these guys off, then you detach them. And you fire, you know, you just keep doing that, making your rockets smaller and smaller and smaller um, as you go. So let's, with that in mind, let's take a look at what I did here. Remember, these are super basic parts. You can do this right out of the gate. So we have our capsule, which is I saved this from our uh, the original, basically. I threw on more science just to get more science. Then under here, you can't see it, but we do have a, uh, right under here, we have a heat shield. And then under the heat shield, right, there's a heat shield, which you basically need for re-entering. Uh, we have a parachute, heat shield, then we have a decoupler, which are over here. So these are what these are what you need to obviously, you know, you hit space bar, you set them all up over here, you hit space bar, and then um, it just detaches that whole stage, right? So one thing you gotta remember is that you need engines. This you can't see it here. Let's see if I can take this away, you'll see it. Yeah, so so there's one stage right there, right? You got all that. Actually, well, I mean the pod will detach itself, but there's one stage with an engine, so that's its own thing, right? And we slap that bad boy on. Same kind of thing, more fuel tanks. Um, and then you can see under here is an engine, right? There's another engine. So there's, you know, this other stage. And then we have like two stages of, uh, of boosters. Now, remember, I'm doing this in science mode, so I don't really care about how much, um, how much money the things cost. So if you're doing career mode, you might have to do things a little bit differently, but science mode is what we do. I'm doing. 
Um, and then I have another stage here where it's these, you know, one booster attached and then four more on the sides. And then those all stage off into four more down here, right? So as we're flying the rocket, we set it all up here. So these launch first, right? So four boosters go, then they, then they run out, then I detach them. Then these five boosters go, then I detach them. Then this uh, liquid fuel engine goes, then I detach, and then so on and so forth, right? So that's it. I mean, this this guy can get to orbit. As bizarre and, and weird as this thing looks, <laughs> it can do the trick. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not showing you in this tutorial how to do like the most opti optimal uh, ascent and everything. I'm just showing you kind of a basic understanding of orbits. You guys can get in there. You can mess with your rockets. You can make them look way cooler. I'm just showing you kind of the basics. Okay, and here we are. Um, now, if you're new to the game, which I'm assuming you are because you're watching this, I I'll take it a little bit slower for you. So down here, SAS is basically a control system. If you don't have that on, you know, your rocket's going to go like this. It's going to go crazy. Leave that on. Over here, you have all these different little nodes. I won't talk about those right now, but just know that um, they exist. And if as long as you have it on stability assist, wherever you use WASD in the keyboard, that's kind of where your rocket's going to go. Uh, maybe we will talk about the pro grade ones as we're flying, but I'll save those for later. So, as you see here, what I like to do, I'm kind of blocking the way. Hang on, let me see if I can uh, get out of here. But as you see here, there's a maneuver mode, right? I like to click that. And we'll talk about that as I'm flying because it'll make more sense. And anyways, this is what I do. Okay, here we go. So let's uh, let's go, spacebar, to launch the first four boosters. There we go. Now we're talking. So I like to get up to speed about 50 kilometers a second. And then um, it's nice to start turning a little bit because remember that MS Paint, right? You don't want to be going fully straight. But if you turn too much, you'll find uh, quickly that you're going you're gonna to fall down, right? So here comes the first uh, booster. Let's get those out of here. Start the second set. Things are looking good. What I meant to say here was when you hold D, that's putting your, it's tilting your craft so that it's on like an equatorial orbit, but you use the Q and E buttons because the roll of uh, your ship might be uh, switching. So as you can see here, I'm using Q to bring it back down to that 90 line, keeping us on an equatorial target. Um, yeah. So we're at about 13 or 15 kilometers right now. As you can see, those are done. Get rid of those. Launch the fuel engine. Hold shift, or you can press Z to uh, start that bad boy up. And now we're up pretty far. So this is, again, this is not the most optimal way to do this, guys. I'm just showing you that it can be done on the on the chintziest of things. So now we're turning a bit more. You see down here, I'm hitting D. I keep hitting D. This is a 40, this line right here is 45 degrees, which is great for now. And now, like, I'm literally stopping that. Now, if I hit M, sorry if this is going a little fast. I realize this is fast now. So, okay, let's talk about this for two seconds. Can I pause it? Do I need to pause it? I kind of need to pause it. Well, we got a minute to talk about it. Let's talk about it. So this, if you press M, you go into this map mode, and then you see a little trajectory thingy, right? Uh, this is the line. This is your trajectory. So if we did nothing as of right now, this is what's happening. We're going to fall right back into Kerbin. And what is this? This AP that's like right here. That is the Kerbin apoapsis. All that means is that's your highest point in your trajectory of like the orbit that you're on. So as you can see, we're not really orbiting as we're going to crash over here if we do nothing. But we want to do something. So the easiest way, guys, is we let's wait until we're, you know, around a little bit before the apoapsis. Now, this isn't precise. Again, we're not doing this precision, but it's shrinking a little bit, as you can see, too. So a little bit before the apoapsis. And what we want to do is bring this guy, hold D, so that this guy's all the way down. This is like, you know, parallel. This is going to shoot us like sideways, essentially. You know, it's going to circularize our orbit, I guess, if that makes sense, right? But we'll go back to this view as you can see here see this top bar here the atmosphere thing you see that now we're there's we're not in the atmosphere anymore and there's nothing dragging us down except for gravity which is what's going to happen here if we do nothing so looks like we're close enough uh what i want to do here is looks like we just want to fire the rocket um right around here now you can use maneuver nodes and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to do that. I just want to do it manual and show you guys what's happening. So I'm going to go back into the map mode. See how our apoapsis is... It's either staying the same or it's increasing, right? See the time, that T minus? We don't want that to keep going down. And as you see here, I just ran out of that stage, so we're going to detach. Start the last stage here. The final stage, okay. 
We don't want that to go down too much because if that starts going down, right, we, you want to start, you basically want to start your, your um, throttling as you're going up. If you start throttling as you're going down, it's too late. So that's why you want to keep the apoapsis over there. So really, you can kind of keep it, you know, as you see, we'll zoom out here. And I'm just going to hit X, which stops it. And as you can see, I mean, there you go. I'm already in orbit. It's a wonky orbit. It's not the best orbit. But again, we're using junk rocket parts, <laughs> you could say. And we're in a constant orbit now. And that's be and that's literally the, the simplest thing. Um... As you can see here is the periapsis is 105 um, kilometers, right? You basically, the, for the, for, to get out of the atmosphere, you basically want to have the periapsis at least 75 kilometers um, out of the atmosphere. That way the atmosphere's friction won't bring you back into Kerbin. So really, I mean, once you're here, getting to the getting to the mun doing a lot of things is very easy once you're at this stage so now we're in orbit how do we go home well think of that coin again right if you're spinning a coin fast 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 and it's never going down right the way to bring it down into that hole would be to slow the coin down so what you want to do is burn and because there's no friction slowing us down it's all about the engine the only way to slow us down is this engine and our, and our fuel right our thrust so, how do we do this? Well, and you see we have very little fuel left. So this is like, we're just cutting it by the skin of our teeth. Um, you'll figure it out. I mean, that's honestly, I could tell you exactly how to build these things, but literally the fun of this game is figuring it out by yourself. It's just getting over those initial frustrations, like orbit mechanics. Once you get that, you guys will be laughing. So let's slow the coin down by uh, applying force in the opposite direction that we're traveling. And let's see what happens from the map view. By the way, I don't know if I explained this, but the periapsis is the lowest point in the orbit. So if this pair, so if you're orbiting and it looks like you have a full circle, right? But the periapsis is let's say 65 uh, kilometers, it's gonna bring you back in. The atmosphere is gonna bring you back in. So you want to have it 75 and above. 100 is for me. I like to hit around 100. Obviously, this is a little bit far, so we were a little inefficient because we're around 200 kilometers there, but. Let's do it. Let's let's apply, turn on SAS, hit retrograde, and let's see what happened. Show you guys. As you see, it just starts shrinking right in. There you go, right? I could just stop right now. And there you go. That's what I like to do to get rid of my stages. Hit prograde. Here we go. Sends me out. And then I like to hit retrograde because it aims the heat shield always in the direction opposite that you're traveling, right? So the heat shield will, if you hit retrograde while you're uh, entering um, a planet, the heat shield will always be first thing. So always hit retrograde when you're coming back. The first biggest milestone in this game is getting into orbit. Once you do that, it's a great achievement. As you see, here we go, we're getting a little spicy, but we got that heat shield, so don't worry about it. Um, and then, you know, the second thing, I already hit my parachutes, by the way. Don't forget to hit your parachutes as you're coming back down. It doesn't matter if you hit it too early, they just kind of, they just kind of hang out. Uh, these might burn up, but yeah. So the second biggest uh, tutorial kind of achievement thing, once you do that, you can do everything would be getting to the moon. Once you can successfully hit up a planet or a moon, land on it, uh, you know, then you are truly laughing. Then you can, then any planet, you know, it seems insane to go to these crazy planets that you probably see on YouTube and stuff, but trust me, it is so possible. It is so possible. All you have to do, get to the mun let me know if you want to see a uh, mun landing tutorial video it's kind of the same style like this kind of casual relaxed you know not so much delta v thrust weight ratio blah 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 focused um that's how i learn anyways and then i like to just do it myself and then i, I have more fun that way let me know if you're not subscribed please subscribe uh give this video a like if you learned anything at all uh hopefully you did hopefully i didn't just completely waste your time one more thing guys, I finally made a Patreon. If you guys like this content like uh, and you're psychos and you feel like subscribing to my Patreon, uh, go check it out. I'm going to start doing a thing where I put the names of my Patreon subscribers um, in my the, in my videos. I think we'll do it at the start because uh, nobody likes nobody likes their names at the end. So um, if that's something that interests you guys, if you want to show your support and I'll show um, you know some appreciation back to you, that would be awesome if you could do that. So check out my Patreon. Otherwise, just keep watching these videos, that's it. 
And uh, if you guys also, we're building a small little Kerbal community over on Discord. Um, I'm going to stop talking now. Thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, you absolute legends. And uh, see you guys later.